Is. So this video is solely focused around the figure four stretch and all the things that I had been missing that meant I did this stretch for years with many teachers and just never felt anything. And people would tell me I was either too tired or too loose or whatever it was. And actually it was none of those things. I was just missing some essential alignment components. So we're gonna lie on your back with your knees bent and your feet flat to the floor. Now, just in case you haven't done any of my other videos on this channel, we're gonna start by just exploring the pelvis. So if you find the two front corner bones on your pelvis and you let the pelvis rock back, so these bones are moving towards your waistline and your lower back is going to the floor, and then let the pelvis rock forward. So we could say these bones are kind of going up and forward and there's this big arch into your back. So as you roll back, I call this tucking because if we reference the tailbone, you're tucking it through the inner thighs and then we tilt it forward. Now I want you to not let your rib cage join in at all because you may find your idea of tuck and tilt is very different when you're not letting the ribs join in. And this isn't really how the body works, but when you're trying to look at something in isolation, you've got to take out the other structures nearby. So I also want you to notice, if you roll the pelvis back, because you're doing a lot of pushing through your feet and a lot of gripping through your bum, how lightly could your feet rest on the floor? And don't hold them off the floor, just let them rest lightly. So what we're looking for eventually is a middle ground. Now, middle ground is just a term because your middle ground right now could be very different to your middle ground two hours from now, tomorrow, six months away. But we roughly want these two corner bones to try and find level with the pubic bone. Here are the common things that pelvises have in them. If you rotate your pelvis to the right and to the left, so we've got a corner bone that's lifting up and one that's dropping down. Do you find it easier to go more one way than the other? Or if you track the surface area of your bum, do you come more over on one side than you do on the other? So my rotation has improved massively, but I still definitely have a little bit of favoritism towards sitting into my left bum cheek. So when I come back to center, I really want to make sure that I'm making that left side do the work necessary to sit into the right side. Now, if you're new to this, it can be really helpful to put something under the bum cheek that you think might be problematic and see if that helps you to find level. And over time, you would want to take that out. So then from here, I want you to reach one knee forward and pull one knee back and then change them over. And as you do this, the pelvis should make almost like this up and down action. I have one side moving towards my rib cage, one side moving away. And we call this hip hiking. And in the figure four, I was combining hip hiking with rotation, which is why I was never getting any form of stretch. So you're going to see if you can get somewhere close to a place where the pelvis and the ribs are a similar distance to each other. So we have three places that we're chasing. A middle ground between a flat back and an arch back. A middle ground between being rotated into one bum cheek more than the other and then a middle ground between one side being closer to the rib cage. Now don't expect perfection, you're probably not gonna get it, but you wanna get roughly into that arena. The last part is if you are somebody that when you lie on the floor, your ribs are always like this with an arch underneath them and your head is tipped back, if you don't pillow up your head, neck and shoulders right now, then you may as well switch the video off because if the ribs don't settle down into the floor, nothing else can find its place and hold its place. And generally, a couple of large cushions, depending how much you need, and you wanna go from top of the shoulders, neck, head, until the back of the ribs past your shoulder blades comfortably sit on the floor. 
So we're going to assume we have all of this in place and you're going to start by bringing one leg in towards you and away from you. And the first thing you want to notice is when you bring your leg in, do you roll your pelvis back and sit your lower back to the floor? I want you to see where can you bring that leg into where the pelvis does not get to roll back in any way, shape or form. Even if it feels very disappointing because your leg doesn't get very far. That's exactly the scenario that I lived in of using my pelvis to lift my leg. Once you've explored where that leg can get to, now you're going to play with turning the leg out and bringing it in. Now, I've lost count of the times I've seen people, let me go this way, think turning out looks like this. It really doesn't. You want to touch the front of the thigh and rotate the front of the thigh to look at the side wall of your room and back towards you. Because if you're leaning out to the side, the very area we're trying to stretch on your derriere can't actually be accessed. So it might be that you have to play just with this part for a little while. Then we start to look at, okay, now I have my turnout, I have my leg lifted, my pelvis is still relatively level. What happens when I go to bring this leg across and down? What changes for me? So for the moment, because this leg is down on the floor, I'm having to do something at the knee to get the leg down. We'll see if that changes or whether that's something that still needs to be addressed. You might notice that to get the leg over, you roll into one side or you take the standing knee and you close it in to bring the leg across. And I'm not saying that you can fix this to perfect. I couldn't, but over time, watching my habit and trying to do less of it meant that this hip opened up a lot more, as did my left one, to let me get in a better position. So once you've achieved this place, now you play with lifting the whole kit and caboodle up. And this can be where trouble starts. I'm going to spin back around this way. So if when you lift the leg up, we immediately go back into rolling the pelvis back, again, we're going to miss the area that you are trying to work on. Now, for some of you, it won't be that you roll the pelvis back, but you'll do this. You'll arch the ribs to get the leg in. So remember, we're trying to keep the ribs heavy to the floor, the pelvis fairly middle ground, and figure out bringing the floor leg up. Once you get to this place, I'm already now in the stretch. But if this standing leg came up, slightly tipped in, or slightly tipped out, you might have to play with it. For a long time, I would take a little rock to the right and to the left until I could find the stretch. And now, some time later, I can sit middle ground and get straight into it. And then you can undo everything and then replay the video and do it all on the other side because one side can be so different to the other. And you may feel the stretch in one side and not in the other side and you really want to look to see what isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. Don't forget to comment below and let me know what you found, what didn't work for you. And for you guys who are watching this on my membership plan, don't forget to put it in the community chat. Let me know how did one hip feel compared to the other hip. Were there some things that you just couldn't fix that maybe I can give you a bit more help with? See you on the mat again soon.